One prominent Republican who believes that the Republicans did not make enough of the issue of race at the Sotomayor confirmation hearings is my MSNBC colleague Patrick J. Buchanan, who argued in his column this week that the hearings should have been seized on even more by Republicans to try to win over white conservatives who feel aggrieved by racial issues. He says, quote, these are the folks who pay the price of affirmative action when their sons and daughters are pushed aside to make room for the Sonia Sotomayors. What Republicans must do is expose Sotomayor as a political activist whose career bespeaks a lifelong resolve to discriminate against white males. Even if Sotomayor is confirmed, Pat says, making the nation aware she is a militant supporter since college days of ethnic and gender preferences is an assignment worth pursuing. Joining us now is my MSNBC political colleague, Pat Buchanan. Pat, it is, it's been far too long since you've been on the show. It's really nice to see you. Good to see you, Rachel. So your argument is that Republicans could reap political rewards by mm -hmm. making the argument that Sotomayor essentially doesn't deserve to be on the Supreme Court, that she's only there because of her race. Is that, is that, did I understand your argument correctly? Well, I think I would vote no on Sonia Sotomayor the same way I would have voted no on Harriet Myers, and I said so the first day she was nominated. I don't think uh, Judge Sotomayor is qualified for the United States Supreme Court. She has not shown any great intellect here or any great depth of knowledge of the Constitution. She's never written anything that I've read in terms of a law review article or a major book or something like that on the law. And I do believe she's an affirmative action appointment by the president. In the United States. He eliminated everyone but four women, and then he picked the Hispanic. So I think this is an affirmative action appointment, and I would vote no. And what do you, what do you think that affirmative action is for? Affirmative action is to increase diversity by discriminating against white males. As Alan Backey was discriminated at the University of California at Davis. As Brian Weber, that worker in Louisiana, was discriminated against. As Frank Rickey and those, and those firefighters were discriminated against. As Jennifer Gratz was discriminated against and kept out of the University of Michigan, which she set her heart on, even though her grades were far higher than people who were allowed in there. That's the type Affirmative action is basically reverse discrimination against white males, and it's as wrong as discrimination against black females and Hispanics and others, and that's why I oppose it. Can, I, I, I obviously, I have a different view about it, but I want to give you a chance to explain what you But why do you have it. a different view? Well, why let me, is it let okay me, to discriminate just, against white males? Let me ask, let me ask you this. Sure. Why do you think it is that of the 110 Supreme Court justices we've had in this country, 108 of them have been white? Well, I think white men were 100% of the people that wrote the Constitution, 100% of the people who signed the Declaration of Independence, 100% of the people who died at Gettysburg and Vicksburg, probably close to 100% of the people who died at Normandy. This has been a country built basically by white folks in this country who were 90% of the entire nation in 1960 when I was growing up, Rachel, and the other 10% were African Americans who had been discriminated against. That's why. So, but does that mean that you think that there are 108 of 110 white Supreme Court justices because white people essentially deserve to have 99.5% of those positions, that there's My, nothing, that doesn't reflect any sort of barrier to those positions by people who aren't white. You think that's what they, you think that's just purely on the basis of what white people have deserved to get? I think a lot of people got up there for a lot of reasons, but my r argument would be get the finest mind you can get. Get the real scholars, whether you agree with Bork or Scalia or not. They're, they're tremendous minds, and I think uh, there are other minds. I'm sure the Democratic Party, I'm sure, has women there that can stand up head-to-head -head with Scalia and make the case who have got tremendous credentials, knowledge, background, but they, this one doesn't have that. She was appointed because she's a Latina and an Hispanic and a woman. She's I mean, also, look at, she is also the judicial n nominee who has more judging experience than any judge who's gone up, say, in the past, I don't know, what is it, 70 years? She has been a, an appellate court judge um, of some distinction for a lot longer than Judge Roberts was, Judge Alito right. was. I mean, it, it, sure. It's not like she was, she was Rachel, picked off the, she was like picked out of the minor leagues and brought up here, Pat. 